So in this one, I'm going to go through SN2. Okay, so you can see clearly there's a different type of starting reagent here. So I've got a carbon with three hydrogens coming off it. So there's lots of room around this carbon for another group to come in at the same time. So this one is a transition state. So it has one transition state in the middle. So we have our nucleophile. Again, I'll do a little smiley face and it's coming in. And as those lone pair of electrons is is coming towards that carbon to make a bond, at exactly the same time, the bonding electrons from this leaving group are going on to the leaving group. So we have this period where we call it a transition state, where we have them both partially bonded. Okay, so they haven't quite left. Um, I guess that dashed line might be a bit confusing, but it's me trying to show you that it's a, a partially bonded group. So this one is leaving and this one's coming in at the same time. So it's a transition state. Now you can't detect these transition states. They're very quick, okay? So what we have here now is we have our X group has completely left and now our nucleophile is attached, okay? So we've had our X completely leaving and our nucleophiles come in. So the things to think about for this type of reaction is when you have the nucleophile come in and the X group leaving, you need to have lots of room around that central carbon. So as that one's coming in and the other one's leaving, they're coming from opposite sides. So if it's coming in from the back, it will be leaving from the front. So we actually get a conversion of the stereochemistry. So hypothetically, if this one was an R compound, we would get exclusively an S as the product. Okay, so we've got an inversion of stereochemistry at the chiral carbon and we have a transition state where we have five things bonded to the carbon. And again, these are partial bonds, they're not formal bonds. So that's the main differences between SN1 and SN2.